Done. Love it for applause. Record, it's on. All right. This is Vic and the Versatiles. <laughs> Vic Holbeck, the um, big attraction with the fabulous, fabulous head of hair that he's still sporting, as you see. Oh, God. Okay. We're going to talk to him this afternoon and find out everything everybody else wants to know about Vic. Well, we got to hold on. Let me, uh, this thing should be, can you, can you see if this numbers are going here? Can my sure. eyesight is bad. Yeah, we got we got that. Jesus, Jesus, we used to play uh, over the crescendo. Would uh, bring all the road bands in, uh, but now these were uh, show bar bands of the mm -hmm. day. So like the Play Boys, jeez, uh, I can't. The Cousins. Oh, oh, nobody would know these bands, but they were just great. Were they bands. local or were they from? Nah, mostly like uh, Philly and Jersey oh, and all. Right. Yeah, I think we were the only Dalward band. That right, I. Yeah. 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 Because I used to sneak into Lou on Airs to see you guys. Oh yeah, yeah. You know me and uh, Louis Centrella. Yeah. Sure, you know, we changed our. I was down there a long time. Whew. That was six nights in a matinee, and we used to commute. All the way up to Saturday. The only time we stayed over was Friday night. Wow. We used to commute. What did they pay you then? It was big money back then. Uh, and you know, worst part is the kids don't believe me. I think we're getting like 275 a man. That was a five piece band. Per week or? Yeah, yeah, per week. I think it was 275. But that was like uh, early 60s, mm -hmm. which was. Real good money in the day, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What What is your craziest story oh about being down there at Luan Airs? Oh, Luan Airs. Oh, 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 I can't even think about that. Oh, the whole place was crazy. <laughs> it was like New Year's Eve every night. Yeah. You packed them in. We used to, uh, we would go shoot pool after we were done on the weekend. And uh, Chris Short, who was uh, a real good pitcher for the Ball Phillies, Chris, yeah, yeah. Lefty, he, used, yeah. he used to hang out with us. And say, he, he wherever we went, Chris went. Mm -hmm. And I remember one night we kept him up till six in the morning, and he pitched the next day and <laughs> won for the Phillies <laughs> and won, and well, nobody knows it. Wow. We had him out till six in the morning. One o'clock at afternoon, he's up and it's like 90 degrees, <laughs> and he's pitching and won the game. That's wow. how good he was a big farmer boy, and uh, you couldn't stop him. Yeah, so that's that's I remember that stood out real good. Do you think he was sober? No, By, okay, <laughs> oh, no, okay, no, no, we had him out all night. Oh man, until <clears throat> the sun came up, and the sun came up, and he goes, Oh, I got a pitch. <laughs> and he had to drive from Lewis to Philly, yeah, and pitch. And then uh, I used to get, well, uh, Jerry Berkowitz from town, who's a lawyer. I hope he's still alive. Uh, no, I think he passed away. Oh, he, everybody I know has passed away. But uh, he would come down Lou Wineers, he'd take his vacation, and he was my by player for two weeks every summer. <laughs> And then uh, who else? Oh, and uh, Charlie Bird, uh, yeah. the guitarist from Washington, done all the original bossa novas with Stan Getz. Uh, his wife, they would take their vacation, and his, he wouldn't let his wife sing with the band. No. So she used to sing for two weeks. She was my girl vocalist for two weeks every oh. summer. Wow. And Charlie wouldn't play. He said he's on vacation. Yeah. Gotcha. But uh, she loved it. Yes. That is, that's. So I had all, all kind of sit-in people, you know. Yeah. 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 And I like the idea that you had all the sit-in people that you're oh, always yeah. we ready to let somebody sit Oh, in. yeah. The more the game, the better. Yeah. <laughs> How long did Michael Egro play with you? Probably two years, I would think. I'd think about two years. Okay. Joe and Mike. 
Then I switched to uh, Joe had Joe Arlen had switched to Hammond organ, and mm -hmm. he could run the bass pedals. So we could do a two-man rhythm section and still have two horns, because I always liked horns. I liked a big band sound. Yeah. And so we had two horns, two rhythm, and Billy Glenn singing out front. Oh. So it gives you like a whole orchestra effect. with only four pieces playing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, right. the effect of yeah. Right. So you get the you're you're a small band as opposed to uh -huh. a big band, yeah. but it's still happening we that could, way. We could make decent money and not burn the owners, you know, with right. high cost and still get a full sound. Yeah. Right. Right. That is that that's a priceless thing. Yeah. Again and again as we listen to musicians, you know, and listen to their CDs. There's something singular about them, and that's sweet, but not that, not that, not that volume, not that depth. Uh huh. That, yeah. 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 Makes the difference. And I remember I was I was playing St. Thomas, and we were at what they called the top of the reef, which was the showroom. It, had, it was all glass, and all the boats would come right oh. through. So it was really cool looking. But the ballroom, we had dressing rooms on the other side was the ballroom. So I used to go back there and practice because Charlie, when Charlie done a show, it would take an hour, hour and a half. So I'd warm up, we'd get, once it got past an hour, and then I'd start warming up because I had to go back to play. Right. And uh, I'm hearing this sax player. And I mean, this is an official sax player. So I go over in the ballroom. And it's Frank Vicario who played with Woody Herman. Wow. Well, his wife's, or his mother's living there, and he came to stay with his mother, and he had a little quartet. So, well, not that long ago, I was playing the Cape May Jazz Festival, and they picked me to play the matinee, so I played with everybody in the festival. I was mm -hmm. the house drummer. And I'm playing with this tenor player. Now this is 20 years later, and he turns around and he goes, St. Thomas, and it was Frank, he was doing the Cape May Jazz Festival. Wow. Yeah. That wow. Was, that, I thought that was wild. He knew it was you. to me. He and he remembered, yeah. Yeah, he knew your sound. Too. Yeah. He, yeah. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, I don't mind me, keep talking. I, I, I'm running out of stories. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't think so. Now, did you take your wife with you? Uh, uh -huh. When I could, because we have four kids. So it depends. Like, uh, when I done, what's it called? The, the Flag Place in Jersey. Six Flags? Yeah. Yeah, great adventure. Great adventure, okay. right? So there I used to take, I, I used to go in the back gate. Uh, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I had two full station wagons full of every kid on the block <laughs> I used to take with me. Oh. And, and they stopped me one day and they go, who are all these kids? I said, they're not kids. I do I do a midget act on, on the stage. <laughs> and, and they let me in. Oh, I yeah. love it. I love it. <laughs> but every day I would take all these kids and my wife and all my kids, all the other kids, two cars full of kids, oh, two man. station wagons full. And we used to do, uh, what's it called, the American Music Hall with Jimmy Clanton. Yeah. Uh, we used to do all the parts. We'd done the one in Texas, all in Hershey Park. Mm -hmm. and all. But it was uh, a group. It would be like Fats Domino, Jimmy, uh, Leslie Gore. Maybe, maybe Chuck Berry, I forget. But that, that, you know, like a 50s review. Yeah. Everybody Reviews could get word. up and do like three tunes. Yeah. Kind of, so it was easy work. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, and fun people to be hanging with. Oh, yeah. yeah you good you were a softy taking all the neighborhood kids. Oh, I had to, or they wouldn't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was king of the month that, that month. Oh, yeah. bet you. When you said two station wagons, I'm seeing one of these old. You know, Ford, station wagons with the long back, Ford, yeah. and I'm thinking you've got all loaded your equipment in it, like kids and, and then you say it's kids. Yeah, loaded with kids. I must have 15 kids every day. Oh my yeah. goodness. Did you ever play or close in, in close proximity locally with 
local groups like, uh, well, I'm thinking the Five Diamonds. Yeah, I don't know the guys that I know of, but that don't mean I don't, I'd see them and know them and don't even remember. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or maybe some others that, uh, like uh, Charlie Gracie or Bill Haley or any of those folks. Well, I see. I, originally, I was in an agency, uh, Continental Artist. So that was Bill Haley, Lord Jim, and Lord Jim, Jim Fettis. And all my original work was with them, mm -hmm. which was uh, back then the college circuit. Right. So we would do uh, Penn, Penn State, Princeton, Rutgers, uh, all, all the all the East Coast colleges. It was a great job. And then everybody was there. Uh, would be would, like Bo Diddley, uh, Chuck Berry. Uh, my favorite, Red Price Stock, nobody knows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great, great band. Hopper. Oh, yeah, he yeah knows. just a great band. Yeah, his brother, Robert Price Stock. Yeah. yeah, great singer, uh -huh. too. Yeah. But Red, Red had always had the best band, musically, yeah. for musicians, not for college kids. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know what he was doing. Right. But all the musicians, you had to go hear Red Price Stock, you know, because he had uh -huh. the best band. How about people like Mike Pettison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, Mike was on bandstand with Shake a Hand. Yeah. That was the last bandstand with Bill Horn. Oh. We were the following week with the bug, and they arrested Bill Horn. Oh, yeah, that was a big scandal. And we were one week from national. Right. Uh, and they all got arrested, oh, cool. and we had, Mike was the last act. But we all played the Valley High down on okay. New Castle Avenue. Right. Mike, and Mike's son's a great player. Right. I think he's the head of the union. Yeah, he's yeah, he still around, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. And oh, he's a real good player. What did they get arrested for? Well, you got video on. The what? It's the video on. He'll, Turn he'll, it off. he'll tell you later. <laughs> he'll tell yeah, you I'll later. <laughs> It's just a big scandal. And big scandal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, big scandal. <laughs> yeah. That's when Dick Clark took over. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. They, they, you know, those eras had their share. You know, you had all the payola yeah. uh, stuff with oh, uh, Tony Amarella. Jesus. Yeah, right. That's, 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 he was yeah. the producer. Tony. Right. That's he was off for just with. a little while uh -huh. between the two. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's who we were dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Tony? What was his first name? Tony. Yeah, Tony Mamarella. I, why I remember that, don't ask me. Uh, but yeah, we were one week uh, from a hit. <laughs> I guess you don't go as far back as Paul Whiteman on his television program. Oh, I remember seeing it. I remember it, seeing it too. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, Les Paul used to play for Paul Whiteman. You know who, who his booth announcer was? No. Paul Whiteman? No. A young fellow by the name of Dick Clark. Oh, no kidding. Oh, no he had an alto player. Al Galadora was just a bad dude. <laughs> That's why I used to watch the show to hear this alto player. Okay. He was like a classical alto player. Uh, very legit. Oh man, technique. I never heard that much technique at that time. And oh yeah. Okay, I'm All running right. out. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. I record. Mm -hmm.